G'day here, uh, comrade subscribers. Thanks for hanging around. We're at 804. Thanks to Simon, who I've just been talking to. I, um, he needed one of these uh, plugs for his VIC-20, um, uh, Euro uh, VIC-20. So luckily, my 3D printer is knackered, still knackered, bloody Weedo X40. Uh, but luckily, I had a couple spare, so I managed to give him one of these. Well, for a few dollars. <laughs> um, yeah, and he uh, became a subscriber, so welcome, Simon. Um, so yeah, we, we were actually, we went 803 and then 804, and then someone dropped out <laughs> today. <laughs> anyway, that's the way it goes. Um, so some housekeeping, I guess. Thanks for everyone who's stuck around. Um, I've, ordered, I've, I've made a, so this is the zebra strip slash elastomeric connector. For the LCD on the Texas Instruments Compact Computer 40, CC40. So I actually went ahead and ordered some samples from Fuji Poly. And hopefully I've got the dimensions right. It's, um, I think it's something like 3 mil wide, 2 mil high, and 155 mil long. So I've ordered a few of those. Let's see if I've got the right one, uh, carbon type. So I'll Hopefully we'll get some of those and we'll be able to maybe fix that CC40. Um, but what else was I going to do? Oh, it's got, I've got a VIC-20 that arrived from the US last week, so I thought we'd have a quick look at that um, today. Oh, so, I need to have another shower. I've been in the pool several times this weekend. It's uh, been, been a bit warm. It looks like a storm's coming, actually. But yeah, anyway, let me, uh, let me get the, uh, the VIC-20. So yeah, so this arrived. Um, it was a pretty good price, considering it's coming from the US. Uh, I haven't checked the cartridges yet. Uh, machine language monitor cart cartridge, super expander, and 16K RAM. So they're always nice to have, originals of. Um, data set. So yeah, data set is a data set. Actually, what are you supposed to do with this ground strap? Are you supposed to connect it somewhere? Anyway, maybe I should read the instructions. Um, power supply. It's two-prong. I, I only buy two-prong. I, I don't like the the later fix. Um, so it's a two-prong US 100, 100 and, okay, 117 volt. Um, so normally I would just... <laughs> chop this part off maybe but you can open this one up so i'll we'll have a look at maybe converting it it's quite heavy actually um and one of the particular reasons why i had a look was because it had an expansion cartridge this looks to be not so much a homemade one but like a like a magazine sort of yeah um I might just give it a bit of a wash. I don't know why it's angled down like that. It's a bit weird. So you'd, yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm collecting these these expanders um, just to get an idea because I want to I want to design my own. I know you can, like Chris Aldridge who did the VGA. He's he's done his own one. Um, but I thought it would be a good way of learning, say, um, KiCad, KiCad, KiCad. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the idea anyway. So, yeah, so that strange <laughs> expander. Uh, 1541 disk drive. Oh, but this one is, again, it's US power. So we'll look at converting that. So this, that's three, uh, I've got a 1540 and, and two 1541s now, um, and the machine itself. So pretty, you know, pretty standard, needs a good scrub. Um, don't know if it works. Let's see. I broke one of these keyboards up today because a um, fellow down in Sydney, hi Hakan if you're watching, <laughs> uh, needed... Um, needed this key plus um some of the key stems so rather than try and buy it from the us or or europe and pay some stupid amount in postage um you know i helped him out 
So I broke up. I had a spare one of these. The computer's not working, but I know that'll piss people off uh, that I broke up a keyboard, but because uh, I know this is a very rare computer, they only made like several million. Um, but um, yeah, I've I've got about twenty VIX, so you know if if I can break up a keyboard and help someone with key stems, because they certainly are better than the three D printed versions. Anyway, jeez, I need another shower or another swim. All right, so um, all of this stuff needs a good scrub. It needs to be pulled apart and have a good scrub. Actually, I might have a look at my. I'll have a quick look at the other disk drives I've got, um, and then we'll see if this works. Okay, so this is uh, 1541 I've got. It's bloody heavy. <laughs> That's also a. It's a 117 volt. Uh, version so that would need some I haven't opened this one up yet this is what it just came came with a, a Vic um, and this is the 1540 I got so I'm working on upgrading it you know the uh, replacing the old linear regulators um, I have put the, the chip somewhere uh, but you can see it's got some discoloration, so I need to need to work on that. So I got this actually in Australia. Doesn't actually specify the input voltage on the back. But jeez, oh, you can see, bloody hell, huge um, huge transformer there. Um, yeah, so I don't know if this is a two forty jobby or not. I'd, I'd have to, um, I'd have to hook it up. So it looks like maybe okay. So it's one of these things, perhaps where the transformer's got several outputs, and they either they use one for 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 one ten volt or for one twenty volts, and the other one for two forty volts, perhaps. Oh, so okay, so that's the input. Let's refuse. Yeah. So anyway, so that's this one was a bit a bit rattly as well, unfortunately, when it arrived. Uh, so it's uh, it's remained on my list of things to do. So put that back like that. I haven't really had a need for a real disk drive, um, and then obviously. This 1541, which is uh, quite different. That's the 1540. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, let's see if this Vic works. Okay, so I'm going to. Um, use this c7 plug right angle that I, I went through a phase of making <laughs> these sort of plugs up so these fit quite nicely into the um i usually do i've modified this one for euro yeah so I, you can sometimes with these sort of c7 plugs if the um holes are big enough and then you, you cut out this center part, you can use it on a Euro um, Vic. That's, you know, it's got the little divider. Um, but yeah, otherwise just stick it in like that. Power supply on. So which one shall we use? We'll use this one here. Plug in, which one's that one? 9 volts, 2.3 amps, turn on, okay, all right, LEDs on, 1.2 amps, okay, let's plug in the video, video is plugged in, and, uh, what's that, all right, let me just get the video set up, See if it's actually. I pulled the HDMI plug out of the my little 
the yo 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 screen and now I can't get it back in again. A minute. Okay, I won't worry about that. Which is the composite cable for this one. That's this one here. Plug in the yellow cable. Okay, yellow cable is in. Turn on the screen. Okay, it's on VGA. Let's go to AV. Hey, it's working. That's good. All right. That's nice. So it's a working Vic. So, yeah, next thing is to... Ooh. Hello. Hello, hello. Just moved it around a bit. Oh, okay. Something, something's loose, maybe. All right, that's good. Work to do, um, but it needs a good scrub anyway. Key, keyboard needs to be stripped. Um, yeah, still needs a good whack somewhere. <laughs> All right, so let's pull it apart then. Or shall we have a look at the power supply first? Let's have a look at the power supply. Yeah, hang on. Let, let, let's have a look at the screen. Okay. So it's just affecting the... No, it's not affecting the borders. It's affecting everything. Power off. Power on. Yep, yeah, so there's something... All right, that's cool. Interesting effect. I don't know if I can, how can I make it stop? That's me shaking it. <laughs> Which I know is not normal operating procedure. All right. So I think it might rain soon, so I've been, uh, it's been mowing the yard weekend, so which takes ages, especially with the whippersnapper you've got to do. Yeah, so I think I probably should go and bring everything in before it gets too dark and the mozzies come out. But yeah, let's, um, oh, I want to pull apart the power supply next just to see, well, I know it's just going to be a huge like a transformer in there. Um, see if we can swap it. Convert it to Aussie. Okay. Uh, back, well, back in a while, but it'll be instantaneous for you. All right. <clears throat> Just trying to open this power supply with uh, Phillips head screws. Man, I really miss the flathead screws <laughs> in the Soviet ones. That was so much easier. It's always trying to find the right screwdriver that's didn't sound good did it probably not meant to be opened that sounds like I've broken the plastic pro post in there because that's not moving so they put screws in it <sighs> that doesn't sound good either <laughs> So yeah, it sounds like probably the plastic posts have all broken off now. And this screw just doesn't want to come open. Man, that one's slightly bigger. Of course it doesn't fit. There we go. And that sounds like something's cracked as well. 
So yeah, no doubt these <clears throat> probably weren't meant to be opened. Then why put screws in there? That's all expense. Get that big screwdriver out again. So I'm gonna apply more torque to it. This screw's actually coming out. Okay, one's out. Okay. Let me get the other three out and I'll be back. Yeah, as I predicted. The uh, bloody posts broke off, didn't they? Hey. <laughs> All right, so. And as expected, it's basically just a huge transformer with a fuse on it on the output. So. You know, I could, <clears throat> I could convert this to, um, I do have toroids, I do have 9 volt toroids that might fit in there. Um, or it's just a matter of basically getting a 240 volt transformer with the same dimensions, really. Um, yeah. Let's see what I've got. Oh, hot and sweaty. So I've, I've, I do have two 9 volt toroids. That's 60 volt amp. Uh, I'm not sure what this one is. 2.78 amps. So what's that? About 5.6, 5.6 amps by 9. 5.6. And this is 3.3 CS. So this is obviously this is obviously the bigger one. You can tell. So this is six point six point six six amps if you combine the secondaries, and this one is about five point six amps if you combine the sec both. Well, 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 more than what you need, which is always good. Um. I think this one's too big anyway, <laughs> so probably could get a smaller one, um, or I could look at getting another one of those. So that's the power supply, and disappointingly, yeah, broken off. You can see here this one's also cracked. Very disappointing. So I'll have to. Um, Yeah, I'm going to have to unscrew all that. Anyway, all right, so that's the power supply. So we looked at at a later date. The toroids are too big for us. Let's have a look at the Vic itself. So obviously it has some nice wear on it. Uh, a little bit of yellowing. Um... This one I'll probably just use cream cleanser just to um, give it a good scrub and get all the dirt out of the out of the um, what's the word the uh, uh, it's, not, it's not smooth out of the uh, whatever okay so this is serial number P three eight six one seven three. Colme Kaxan calls Uk Sait the Man Colme. Saw Mexi. Okay. Yos Halotika Halotika Tierra. If you wanted to know. In plural. Okay. 117 volts, 1 amp. We know that's a lie. <laughs> It's just over an amp. Although, no, was that, what am I thinking of a power model? It might be a power model. 
in which case, wouldn't it be more if the voltage is lower? The same power consumption? I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. Okie dokie. So usual sort of state. Just a little bit, um, just a little bit of dust in here, so we can sort that out. No problems. Um, the top of the video output is off a little bit, but I normally toss this anyway. <laughs> Oh, a bit of oh, there's okay. There's a bit of corrosion around the uh, smoothing capacitor. I, mean, I don't know if I can do this for much longer tonight. <laughs> I might have to go have a shower. So, yep, don't don't need that anymore. Right. So yeah, so that looks like there is some. Looks like okay, maybe the smoothing capacitor has has leaked. Um, let's have a close look. I'll go have a quick look down here. That don't look too good, does it? Um, feels okay. Um, yeah. So we'll definitely be removing that. We're we'll replacing the LM323 with a switching version anyway. Um, I've been a bit reluctant to replace electrolytics lately because it's just a lot of effort. If they look okay, but yeah, there's certainly there's certainly some corrosion around that one there, isn't it? So what I'll have to do the best way because I like to give these a good scrub is I'll remove remove all the socketed chips. So luckily everything's socketed. I'll remove the um, the shield around the video output. I'll remove the oh the heat sink off the um, this is the rectifier here. So I'll remove that heat sink off there. I'll remove this heat sink as well. Remove the linear regulator. Remove the smoothing capacitor. And then basically give it a good scrub. Make sure we get rid of all that crap. Oh, oh hello. What's that? What have they done there to the fuse? <laughs> Um, okay. Hmm. All right. Let me, um, let me look at the fuse as well. Okay. Just record just in case the whole thing explodes in my face. Okay. Uh, I don't know why that was, <laughs> it looks like, okay. Right, it's just aluminium foil. It even looks like, uh, feels like uh, bubblegum wrapper. But, um, okay. Fuse has probably seen better days, but I don't know why that was done there. It all looks okay down there, so I don't know why they had to, why they had to wrap the fuse in it. Um, but yeah, so I'll start, whoops. I'll uh, start dismantling. I'll get all the chips out first, I think. Remove that and give it a clean and see how we go. Okay, all the chips are removed. I'll just remove the board now. Then um, I'll uh, get rid of the heat sinks. I also like to remove the switch as well. I like to replace the switch with a modern one. It's just, it feels nicer when you switch it on. You get a good, good feeling. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, um, yeah, so one, um, one little tidbit. Yeah, I'm just going off the troubleshooting that I've done is if you find that your um, Vic takes more than a few seconds to boot, you've got this uh, 555 timer here as a monostable, uh, so single shot. So it actually, I don't know. So it's got a one microfarad, 50 volt. I don't know why it's 50 volt, but one microfarad 
electrolytic here that um, contributes to the time setting of the 555. And if this is like, I think if the capacitance is increased, then the 555 will hold the 6502 and reset longer. So the idea is that when, it, when you first boot up, this holds the 6502 and reset until everything's stable. So a few seconds, and then the 6502 is brought out of reset and can start processing. Um, but yeah, so if this little capacitor here, one microfarad, if that's uh, gone out, if that's more, then it'll, yeah, you'll turn it on. Like if you turn it on and you get nothing for a few minutes, well, and you get nothing straight away, you might turn it off straight away and think, oh, okay, there's some wrong, some issue with it. So always turn it on, leave it for a few minutes. And if it, something comes up after a while, then okay, maybe look at this timer, timer circuit. Anyway, that was just, I try to help when I can. I'm not an expert, but I have noticed one or two things. All right, so the board's free. Um, still need to get the Vic out. So I'll take that off to give a good scrub as well. I'll probably replace the rubber feet as well, put new rubber feet on. Yep, all right. Stick that there for now. So I remove. Oh, God, I always get rid of this shit as well. Uh, da, da, da. So I'll, anyway, I'll pull this stuff off. This um, bottom. Faraday type stuff, I guess. And on the side edge as well. So yeah, let me just do that. Okay, now we're getting down to it. So, okay, so this rectifier actually has been connected via, oops, sorry, feeling a bit. Um, so here as well, sometimes they don't do this, sometimes they do. So there is actually, um, yeah, it's actually grounded to here. So you can see that basically you need to put it back on here. You've got some lock top lock type type of stuff here. But yeah, when you're refurbishing these, you want to put new um, heat sink compound on there anyway. Depending on what you want to do, you could completely bypass the rectifier. If you're just going to put 9 volts DC straight in, you can see put new, so we'll, we'll clean that up. But if you're going to put DC 9 volts straight in, then you don't even need the rectifier. You can bypass that and go straight to the to the regulator. Or if you're going to put five volts straight in, then you can bypass the regulator and go anyway, whatever. Depending on how much you want to save. So um, what we want to do now is um, we want to desolder that. Switch on the desoldering. We want to remove that. Desolder that desolder that and then it's ready for a wash I'll probably take this side off as well uh, you can on these ones on the euro ones you can't because the the um, power plug is is fitted on, onto this side piece but on the US ones you can and make sure you don't confuse get the screws messed up messed up mixed up mixed up So yeah, no, that's good actually because there was a bit of fluff and crap in there anyway. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can. I'll probably remove this as well. You can pull pull this apart and refurbish it. Give it a good clean. Pull it all apart. Um, Relubricate it and everything. Um, so I'll probably probably pull that off as well. Um, yeah. All right. Getting there. Turn the soldering iron on as well. Yeah, that's going to be Okay. 
And this one as well. Just trying to hold hold the nut whilst I screw the screw. I do actually have a a uh, tool that I could stick in there to hold it in place. Anyway, let me let me get that sorted. Okay, screws are removed. So first thing I like to do is if that's on, is just to reflow the solder a bit so that when I use the desoldering line it uh, works a bit better so I want to do that and I also want to yeah okay do the it's probably the wrong soldering iron bit so this is this the uh, on off screw as well that I want to remove on off screw on off switch okay that's reflowed I also want to do the, um, the Faraday cage um, around the video area. But we'll do those bits first. Okay. to lever it off a bit as we desolder so you don't want to force it off in case you bring some of the PCB track away with you so maybe let's just do this one heat it up okay and off it comes okay so you can can reuse the heat sink it's not necessary too bad does it so I could clean it up and use it so let's have a look at the board so it does look like that corrosion is around the, um, the smoothing capacitor so yeah definitely definitely need to replace that all right I'm just doing the switch as well it's got these two bits at the front just for mechanical strength I think I've got them out Okay, the back ones are okay. The back contacts have come out. So there we go. So the switch is out. So I'll give that a bit of a clean up, but I'll probably replace it anyway with a modern one. That's quite nice. Let's give this a bit of a clean up. Okay, now just the Faraday cage for the oops, for the video section. So again, we'll just reflow the solder there, I think, and then start desoldering. Sweat and buckets. So we're just about done. I've removed the uh, Faraday cage and um, removed the uh, suspect capacitor. So we'll just move the cartridge. A uh, bit now as well, which is this here. And um, we're ready for a good wash. So I like to, I like to uh, do it in the sink with detergent and warm water and give it a good spray. So I think it'll be very good in this case, especially to get rid of that corrosion there. And um, once that's done, then we'll start um, 
putting it back together, upgrading it and putting it back together. So, yeah, so that'll be tomorrow. Well, depending on work. But, um, yeah, I think that's it for tonight. Bye for now.